arena because that's one place he won't be able to duck. The vibrations are against him, the planets are against him, but already he lost right. the first five rounds. I don't prove to the world that I'm still the fastest, the prettiest, the most classic, the most scientific, the greatest fighter of all time. Imagine if fight and was in the world, Muhammad Ali! Ali! Let's just go to Joe Frazier right away here. Three times, lost the first one, obviously, won the next two. These were epic fights. Kill the little and big, all alike, if you come in to see the fight. I'm the resurrection, the phase of the whole day. If we look at the heavyweight division, which was once upon a time, you could make the case. I love it. It was, it was America's favorite sport. But the sport of boxing, what it is, isn't what it was. What it was was, I mean, you had gladiators going into the ring. Said people don't know. Sucker, you ain't nothing. Sucker, look at you. You out, sucker. <laughs> okay, now I'm making this video for people who are interested in beating gang stalking. Now, gang stalking to me is organized intimidation. My personal experience with it has been cars following me with headlights on. Uh, you know, you notice your phone is tapped, um, you use Wi-Fi, it seems like somebody's messing with it, listening in. You can see how the signal gets low. Uh, all kinds of things. People you know um, can be used. Like if you have a distant cousin or something, they'll use them. Uh, it, I mean, it could be anything, man. It, it, can, be, it can be as simple as... Oh my, Somebody, them flying a helicopter over your house. Now, to most people, this will sound very bizarre, but this happens, and it depends on what level you're at. Some gang stalking, like when I first, when it first started with me, it was very, very light. It was like one car would show itself and stuff like that. But as I continued on uh, in my um, subjects of alternative research, conspiracy research, and I started to expose more things, I became more of a threat to whoever felt threatened, and therefore the financial assistance... Um, you know, the gang stalking thing became more heavily financed, more different tactics became involved, and it's very psychological. Uh, for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have different sorts of fears. One of the first fears I had to get over was the fear of death. Now, again, the people I had got into it with were very heavy people, very big people, like, you know, people, not the CIA, the people behind the CIA, who run the CIA, are the type of people I had got into it with. And so... That being said, um, I, I knew that, you know, these people wanted me out of the way. They were going to have me out of the way. So I thought they were going to be able to do it like in broad daylight and just walk away with it and be all good. And so eventually I just had to accept the idea that, okay, death, death is here. I'm going to die. And then I went outside and I went about my business and nothing happened. Right? And I had been hiding inside my mother's house for about a month. About a month. And so, uh, and people will think you're tripping. Like my mother, she thought I was crazy. There's a lot of people out there when you go through gang stalking, they will think you're absolutely mad. They're not going to know what you're talking about. And you can go on the internet. Even the Department of Justice admits it's real. Organized stalking. Um, you know, you've heard people talk about like electronical weapons. That's real. Um, I've experienced my food being drugged at like restaurants. I swear to you, the, the restaurant itself will be in on it. The manager, whoever they have right there. And it's being done under health codes. You know, there's, there's certain laws that they have if you're considered a risk or something to the public or a danger to the public, which you're really not. In my case, I was. I was a danger to, you know, other elements. But what they would do was they would contract to the restaurant and have my food drugged. Now, this wasn't an attempt to kill me or an attempt to make me, like, you know, it wasn't, like, they didn't put, like, four or five hits of, uh, you know, LSD in there or something to make me, you know, have a real bad experience like that. It was a form of intimidation, like saying, hey... We can get to your food. I, my mother, I live, my, right, I live at my mother's house. I even had a pizza, right? There was a pizza. My mother had went and got a pizza, brought it back. They had put an uh, element in there, a drug in there, a chemical. Now, me and my mother had got an argument about it. She tried to explain to me that I was tripping. I was over-imagining stuff. No, no, the Jets Pizza place, <laughs> whoever the people are that work at Jets Pizza in Muskegon, Michigan, they were able to put the drug inside the pizza on the orders of the, you know, with the gang stalking behind the scenes, how they network. You know, they know you're going to, they listen to all your phone calls. They know where you're going, what you're doing. They'll already have people there waiting for you. 
And this is the sort of thing that happens, man. And it depends, again, on what level you're at. Now, some people, to have their phone tapped is a big deal to them. When I was growing up, I used to hear people saying, oh, my phone's tapped. And that would be a really psychological, messed up thing for them. For me, it's not a big deal. Like, if I go to the gas station right now, there will be people at the gas station waiting for me. There will be people following me around. So it gets to the point where I don't even notice it anymore. Like, I'll be walking down the street, and there will be 10, 20, sometimes 30 cars with their headlights on. It doesn't even bother me. A year ago, that really would have bothered me. Now it doesn't bother me at all. I can just turn, I can turn it on and off like that. And it, it's to the point now where um, it's not even like a competition anymore. It doesn't really bother me. It's just like there are things I, I don't like to have to deal with. Like who wants to go out to eat and have to have somebody, and somebody put a drug inside your food? That's not something you want to deal with. But, you know, if you want to go out to eat, you're going to have to face that. They may do it. They may decide not to. They may do it every time. I've had it done at the Applebee's in Grand Haven, Michigan. I've had it done at the Burger King in downtown Muskegon. Um, again, the Jets Pizza in Muskegon. Uh, it, it just comes and goes. And so the biggest thing that doesn't bother me is people who try to present themselves like, like, they're, um, like they're tough or whatever. You know, I'm not afraid to fight anybody. So it doesn't bother me. If somebody gives me a... a if, so, if somebody gives me a look, depending on how they do it, who the person is, I may or may not take offense to it. Like with some people, I'll take offense to it. With some people, I really won't care. I'll know they're doing it just because they got paid to do it, and they got to make their money, so just like whatever. But with certain people, the way they do it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, I, I, know, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I'm not capable of. And, I, you know, I know if somebody ends up, me and somebody get into it, no matter what, if they're going to end up, go, you know, at, at the end of it all, they're still going to end up having to go to the hospital, even if they win the fight. So I'm not, you know what I mean? I, I'm not worried about it. But on the same token, they can use police. Police will do it. And that's different. You know, dealing with somebody on the street, two or three people on the street, and dealing with the police is a different type of thing. But I hang out all over. I'll go to a real nice neighborhood. I live in uh, North Shores, Michigan. I'll go to a real nice neighborhood in Grand Haven. I'll go, there's an area uh, that, that I grew up in for a few years growing up. I got a lot of family in uh, Muskegon Heights. I'll go, you know, talk to people and mingle and go to the projects and stuff like that. It doesn't bother me, you know. I, I'm not a confused individual, so wherever I go, I'm, I feel safe, you know. But, um, uh, in these are areas where there's a lot of shootings naturally. Some of the areas I go to... There's already people, you know, been shot, been stabbed, or whatever. It doesn't, you know, uh, I know where I'm at. So, but, I'm trying to give people advice. See, it's been, I've, this, I've been going on, this is going on for a year with me, with the gang stalking. And it started off coming out of conspiracy research, and a lot of things I had discovered. And I know a lot of people brush conspiracy off. Some people who suffer through gang stalking, or not suffer, but some people who go through it, are activists. Like, they want to change the world and protect the climate and stuff like that. Or you may be a politician and you're going through it. Or you just might as, you might not know why you're going through it. You, I mean, your name might have been drawn out of a hat. I, I, I don't know why that would happen, but there are people saying that they don't understand why it's happening to them and it's happening to them. You know, maybe there's something going on in your life that you don't know about. And so you, your name was put out there. But I... They'll even, you know what, they'll even, they'll even get girls, like, if you, if you, like, okay, there's certain types, like, when I go over, when I go over, like, my cousin's house, or our friend's house, and stuff like that, there's even certain type of girls, you know what I mean, like, uh, like, some of the girls, like, like, a real light, light-skinned, pretty, uh, black female and stuff, and she looks a certain way, I'll be wanting to, I'll be, <laughs> you know, I'll be wanting to interact with her and stuff like that, and they'll purposely find females to fit that image, and walk past you, and if you if you try to talk to them or something like that, it, you try to you know cut into them or say hey you know what's going on? Blah, 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 I want your phone number. I want to call you. I want, I'll talk to you later on. Yada yada. They won't do that. And so I had to rechange my style. I had to like when I t when I approach the female, I'll be like oh yeah yeah I'm famous. You didn't know I was famous. And she's like what? What do you mean you're famous? I'm like yeah I'm famous. You know why do you think they paid you money to walk past me and not say nothing to me? Don't you realize I'm famous? And so, and then I'll have flyers, like I'll have little things that tells people about my story and like what happened to me and what's going on in my life. 
and I'll give her the flyer and my phone number will be on it. And so that's my, so maybe, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way that's, that's how I, I find a way to get through it. You know what I mean? And as long as you don't let these people disconnect you from yourself and you keep an open mind and you know, um, cause they'll, they'll find out what bothers you, man. If, if like the same situation, they'll pay somebody some money. They'll give them sixty dollars or one hundred and sixty dollars or two hundred and sixty dollars or three hundred and sixty dollars to do something. It might just be as simple as just to cut you off and never talk to you again. They can do that. They can offer people money. So you can't change how the gang stalking thing works. You can't change that. You have to change your vibration within yourself. You have to change the way you connect to the world around you, how you approach individuals. Like me, I kick it with them. Like if I know somebody's a gang stalker or whatever like that, I mean, they don't, you know, they don't, th they're just getting paid just to follow you and stuff. Kick it with them. Talk to them at whatever level you can talk to them at. A lot of them are Christians. Talk to them about the Bible. A lot of them, you know, if it's a female and you're a guy, talk to her. Tell her she's attractive and stuff. If, you know, if you're a woman and it's a man or whatever, you know, try to interact with these people. Don't interact with them. Uh, don't connect to them through a fear or connect to them through something you don't prefer, connect to the reality around you through what you're motivated about doing. And that's how you overcome it. A car following you is nothing. Anybody can get over that. At first, it does gonna, it's going to mess with you a little bit, but it's nothing. It's nothing. It's really nothing. See, my, my situation was, I was the best at what I was doing as far as conspiracy research. And I was on my way, you know, from what I've seen, I'm the only person who got as far as I did that never interacted with um, these people as far as making deals and stuff like that. So that's why it happened to me. But uh, I consider myself the best, the person that went the furthest in it without selling out as far as conspiracy research goes. Now, with me with the gang stalking or whatever, I, I don't think there's anybody out there who does it as easy as I do it. Because when I, when I go on YouTube videos and I see people, they seem all afraid and all that stuff. And I don't know why. I don't know why they seem all afraid, but they do. They they seem very afraid, <laughs> and I don't I don't know why people are so afraid of cars following them. I, I don't get it.